Now listen, I may not have the best taste when it comes to anime and whatnot, and lord knows what my taste even is. If I even have the slightest of investment, chances are I'll love whatever I'm watching. Or at the very least, I won't hate it. But there has been very few a show that has fallen under the guilty pleasure category. Very few a show I've watched has very quickly fallen under that category than this show. Eminence and Shadow. If you watched my fall binge cap uh, last year, you know that I praised this show very highly. Now back then it was only about 12 or so episodes deep, but now a few weeks later it's done. And I literally just finished watching the last episode. I already knew like I'm gonna dedicate a whole video talking about it because in the binge cap, I usually like to keep those spoiler free because those are more just like, hey, I watched this and uh, maybe you can watch it too. But as with my one-off reviews, those always tend to be spoiler heavy, which this will be. Right away, I'm going to say this. Eminence in Shadow is definitely one of those shows that probably falls under the I'm 14 and this is deep kind of show. For me, I kind of like those shows, you know? Mirai, Nikki, Akamega Kill, those shows are so trash. But at the same time, they're so good, kind of. Like, this show, though, absolutely knows what it's doing. Like, right away, I'm gonna say, that finale, bro, was so fucking good. <laughs> this show absolutely gets right its tone, its art direction, and its choreography, which is something that... Which is stuff that shows like this either get right or get wrong. Okay, I'm kind of jumping the gun a bit, but... Overall, plot synopsis of Eminence in Shadow. Uh, it is an isekai. It starts, you're following this dude named Sid. He sort of has like this wannabe hero complex. Not necessarily wannabe hero, but just wants to be someone, in his words, someone who's strong enough to take a nuke. But of course, the limits set in our world would not allow that. He pretty much just does whatever he can, like he takes crowbars, he beats the fuck out of hoodlums and kills them, you know, to save people. And that's all pretty much the first episode. Then it ends with a news thing being like, this kid was hit by a truck and died. And so Sid gets isekai to this world and of course he has his memories of the original world so he's able to train up his body train up his skills from a very young age to the point where like by the age of 11 he's already strong enough to take on some of the world's greatest swordsmen and villains and win with relative ease i definitely say the one two punch of episode one and two are amazing because episode one shows everything in the before world and then episode two is everything in the after world you know the isekai world he's a kid but he's still like doing this thing and you know he's announcing himself as shadow the leader of the shadow garden which is this organization of himself and these elves who he's rescued and like uncorrupted the head elf of those elves being alpha and then of course their naming scheme being like Alpha, Beta, Charlie, whatever. I mean, there's variations of it, but you know, it's like A, B, C, D, you know, in terms of like the tops of them. Although it was just revealed in this last episode that there are a lot more than just those handful of elves. I just want to get like this recap part out of the way, because this is more or less repeating what I talked about in the binge cap. I just want to get into like the actual like spoiler stuff. First of all, Sid as a main character is a breath of fresh air, I would say, for the isekai OP protagonist uh, genre. Just because he's handled in such a unique, or I don't know if I want to say unique, but a different than what I've seen way. He's pretty much like Kira. If Kira had power to back his shit talk. If he had like the brawn and strength to match his wit. Like that's pretty much what Sid is. Like Sid throughout many points in this show is battling beings on the level of gods and just being like, this is pretty fun. <laughs> like so far in this first season, we've only seen, I think just little glimpses into Sid's true full power and that was when he fought the one goddess the goddess of war or something and then of course anytime he goes i am atomic i love how that's handled as well it's just like it's like asmr it's just like i am atomic i mean it's like his thing it's like i wanted to be stronger than a nuke so he became an atom bomb <laughs> one thing i am sad though about this series is i mean i'm sad but like it's it, it's still fine the music in this show is so phenomenal and the one theme that caught me right away and made me realize i'm gonna fucking love this show because that's usually all it takes is just hearing one really good theme for me it's the theme that you'll hear in the background right now but like i heard that theme and i was like oh god this is so good and every time it would come back up later in the show i would just get so hyped but after like episode 13 12 ish after the 
he fights the black-haired goddess blood girl. The theme never plays again. I was kind of hoping it would play one more time in the finale, but I get though that like that theme is sort of just like the shadow garden theme. Like it's whenever like all the elves show up and are doing shit and that doesn't really happen. They don't really like show up as a unit towards the second half of the season, which is fine. But even still like the rest of the music and the soundtrack of this show so good. Like, I can't wait till it's officially released and I can listen to it all. I think one of the best parts about this series is just how self-aware it is. Because, like, it already knows, like, the typical tropes of, like, an isekai and whatnot. Or even from, like, your typical shonen. So it, like, kind of makes fun of them and then just moves on from them. There's points where it's, like, Sid in disguise is being challenged to, to a duel and whatnot. I will beat you, I swear. And it's just, like, not even focusing on what they're talking about. It's just, like, this guy in a background's talking. Or he just retorts with... Okay, see you then. Because Sid is literally so powerful, like when he adopts the shadow persona, that literally he can shit talk as much as he wants, and it's valid. <laughs> so far in the series, there hasn't been anyone who can touch him. And even when there is someone who maybe gets a little nick or a cut on him, it's either intentional or he loves it. <laughs> the action in this show is so amazing. Every time there's a fight, and when it got to like the last half with the tournament, I'm definitely gonna now re-binge the series again. I binged like the first 11 episodes when they were out, and then I started watching it week to week. Now that I have it as a whole, I'm gonna watch it again, because definitely the first half of the series is so different from the second half, just in terms of what's handled and even the tone to an extent. Because even in the second half, like when it references some stuff that happened before, I'm like, oh yeah, that did happen. Because the second half and the first half do, in a way, kind of feel like different shows. I mean, it's mainly because the second half deals a lot more with like the tournament stuff. It's very refreshing when Sid goes from his Sid persona, you know, wanting to be a background character, to Shadow, where he just like goes full on just like I am the main character of this story none of you can do anything it's that arrogant prideful character that I love so much but it adds to it as well when he can fully back it up and it's like yeah none of you can touch him which makes me wonder just how is like what's the climax of this series look like I'm debating whether or not I want to go into the manga just because like the style and tone of the show is really good, but you know, it's probably gonna be a couple more months before anything's released on season two. Makes me wonder if there will be someone who is able to challenge Shadow at all. But then going into the finale, I'd say like my new favorite fight of the whole series where I thought it was gonna be a three-way fight between Shadow, Beatrix, and the red haired girl who i'm forgetting the name of i thought like all three of them were gonna fight each other because but that fight was done so well because it really makes it feel like shadow is the villain well, i mean in a way it's shadow is the vi he's not necessarily the hero he's not the villain but you know to everyone else who's not part of shadow his organization and all that he definitely is the villain it's cool seeing a two-on-one and that's just one of my favorite things in anime and you know shonen in general just seeing really good choreographed animated fights and yeah this show definitely had it and i love loved it a lot especially at the end where he used crowbars again and that was like oh that's a good call like despite the fact that the cast is primarily female there are definitely fan service moments but it does not plague the whole show like you would expect it to which definitely is bonus points for this one overall this was very tangential this one's a weird one to kind of talk about just because like i can't really explain why i liked it so much like on the outside it looks like a fairly simple sh i mean just watch it really because now that the first season's completely done it's a fairly easy show to watch like it goes by pretty quickly to be fair it's like some of my favorite characters in anime are those prideful cocky characters like you know vegeta Gilgamesh and now Shadow. So I'm curious like people like what people think about it. I'm sure this will get a season two because from what I've seen it's pretty popular. So overall what would I rank Eminence and Shadow? Fuck it man. Easy 10 out of 10. It's become one of my new guilty pleasures and I don't even feel guilty about it. Like this shit slapped from episode to episode. I look forward to seeing more. I'm probably gonna end up reading it. Who knows? I can't recommend it enough, and I'm curious what anyone else who's either watched it, or if you're gonna watch it, tell me about it, what you think about it, down below. So either way, this was this review of Eminence and Shadow. Join me for many other one-off reviews, reactions, and gameplay coming to you soon. So until next time, I'm Lancer, thanks for watching.